Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll solve one variable equations one variable equations that you will find on page number 71. Please turn to it, page number 71, and today is our lesson number 111. In addition to the problems that, you, that we're going to do today from page 171 and 172, if you decide that you need some more practice on the concept of solving one variable equations, you will find that we have solved every single math problem that appeared in the previous edition, the fifth edition, and you will find the solutions to all of those problems from day number 1 through 80. T is 5th edition, day 1 through 80. And this particular, to this particular topic, one variable equations, you will find the, the, the problems on day number 53, 54, and 55. The material in the two editions are not arranged in the same order. So one variable equations, if you want to get some more practice, one more time, just type in T's, day 53, 54, and 55. Or there is one more source that you can avail yourself uh, two, which is the basic math series. Just type in basic math, day 14, day 29, day 67. One more time, basic math, day 14, 29, and 67. Oh, let's get going. Enough of the talk. You will see that the examples that they give you, they are very simple, very straightforward, but in the real exam, they don't tend to be that, that straightforward and that simple. I don't know why they do that. For example, look at the first one here, day, page number 71. They are very silly, very straightforward. Number one, it says x plus 20 is equal to 100. What's the value of x for crying out loud? If x plus 20 is 100, of course x is 80. But how would you show your work? If you have to show the work, we'll subtract 20 from both sides of the equation. If we tw subtract 20 from both sides of the equation, 20 cancels out from here, and of course x is equal to 80. Obviously, what did they, what did they expect it to be? As I said, it's too silly. I don't I have not seen example questions this simple in the real exam. So which is why we're going to do some extra problem and which is why it's important that you work through these, this in the, in the old edition, they had, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, in the old edition they have given you more material to practice on and as I said already, watch those three videos in addition to, in addition to today's video day, it should say day 114, not 111, today is day number 114. In addition to today's video, day 114, and, and tomorrow's video, day 115, in addition to these two videos, you're going to watch those three videos, and if you're still in more practice, you can watch those three videos. There's plenty of material. Number two, just be patient with me. These silly ones are going to be out of the way soon, okay? This is x minus 5 is 12. What number minus 5 is going to be 12? Obviously, 17 minus 5 is going to be 12, but if you want to show your work, we add 5 to both sides because we have a negative 5 here, so we add 5, so it cancel out, and x comes down, x comes down, and it's 17. Number 3. Ah, number 3. Let's do number 3 on the top. Now we're getting a little bit nitty gritty, maybe not. Let's do on the top. Number 3 says, 5x equals 2. 5x equals 2. Well, we're not interested. We're not interested in knowing how much our 5x is. We want to know how much is 1x. Now we are on the next page, page number 72. How do we find out the value of 1x? Well, that's simple. Just divide both sides by 5. Divide both sides by 5 so that this 5 cancels out. With that 5, we are left with just x and x equals 2 fifths. x equals 2 fifths. Which, must, which makes perfect sense because we were told that 5 times x, which is which we are claiming is 2 fifth, 5 times 2 fifth, how much do you suppose 5 times 2 fifth is? 5 is going to cancel out and of course we are going to end up with 2, which is what we are told here. I feel even silly to actually quote unquote verify this thing is too, is too simple. Number 4. Number 4 says, Number 4, number 4 says, 2 seventh x equals 4. Let's see what happens here. Let's pay attention, okay? We are told that 2 seventh x equals 4. 
Well, first we got to get rid of the first we got to get we got to get rid of the seven from the bottom from the denominator. How do we get rid of the seven from the bottom? It's very simple. Multiply both sides of the equation by seven. This seven is going to cancel out with that seven. We're left with two x. Two x equals four times seven. Don't worry about don't worry about what four times seven is uh, right now. Don't worry about it. We'll do it at the very end. We have two x's. We don't want two x. We just want one x. Divide both sides by two. As you divide both sides by two, I have to bring my equation sign down because the equation sign is to line up here. There you go. As you divide both sides by two, these two cancels out, and we're left with x by itself. X equals four times seven over two. We have a two at the bottom. We have a four on the top. Let's divide top and bottom. Let's divide the top and bottom on the right hand side by two. If you divide top and bottom by two, the two will become one, and four becomes two, and two times seven is fourteen. X equals fourteen. We find that we find that x equals fourteen. X equals fourteen, and we can very quickly verify it. We can very quickly verify it. The equation that was given to us was two seventh two seventh x equals four. We were told, and we are saying that x is fourteen. Two seventh x has to equal four. That's what that's what. Originally was given to us. This seven was introduced by us. This seven was seven was introduced by us. We multiply both sides by seven. So let's see what what two seven x equals to. It better equals four. Well, we have seven at the bottom. If if this four is if this fourteen annoys you, if you do not know what I mean by top and bottom, if it helps you, put down fourteen as fourteen over one. So we have two seven times fourteen over one. We have seven at the bottom. We have fourteen on the top. Let's divide top and bottom by seven. Seven is going to go away, and fourteen is going to become two. Two times two is indeed four, which is what we are told. It works. Let's do the very last one that they give us before we do the exercises. Number five. Number five. And I just realized that I made a nice cup of tea, and I forgot to bring it in here. Number five. I need it now. What does number five say? It says 3x plus 5. Number 5 says 3x plus 5. We are told has to equal 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1. That's what it's told. Let's see what we can do here. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Well, we got to bring this 2x to this side. Bring all the x's on 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 the left hand side, and bring all the all the all the all the Known quantities on the right hand side. How do we bring the two x on this side? It's very simple. This two x has a plus sign in front of it. When there is no sign given to us, it's understood that there is a plus sign in front of it. So to undo it, to kill this two x, we need to subtract two x from this side and from this side. Subtract, and again, this one has a plus sign in front of it. That will take care of our two x. We got to bring the five to this other side. If you want to bring five to the other side, let's subtract five from both sides. That's it. We are done. We are done. Let's see what we can do. It turns out, it turns out, this this positive five is cancel out with this negative five, which was the whole point. And here we are left with positive three x and a negative two x will give us an x, which is exactly what we wanted. Here, the positive two x and a negative two x is going to cancel out, and we are left with positive one and a negative five, which is going to give us negative four. So what we're claiming, what we're claiming is that x is equal to negative four. The last thing we have to do here. Is to verify our answer. It's always a good idea to verify your answer if you can. There aren't there aren't too many opportunities in the exam where the nature of the problem is such that you can actually verify your answer. So every once in a while, an opportunity presents itself where you can verify your answer, where it is simple enough to verify your answer. Don't squander it. Make use of it. Don't waste it. Yesterday, during the lecture. I put down the word "inane" on the blackboard. It was misspelled. It, it doesn't have two n. It only has one n. Inane means to be silly, to be unsubstantial, to to not uh, to not make much sense. I made a mistake. I don't know what I was doing, and I said it was a, it was quite inane of me to do that. It was quite silly of me to do what I did. I don't remember what it was, but whatever it was, it was quite silly of me to do that. It was quite stupid of me to do that. It was quite inane, and that's spelled with one n. Squander if you're interested. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, and I see no reason why you wouldn't be, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, I'll give you one more source. Let's first see if we learned the word squander or not. I'm sure we did. Just give me one brief second. I'll, I'm almost ninety percent sure that we covered it. Squander. 
quanta. Day number 37. Vocab day 37. Just type in vocabulary words day 37 and the video should pop right up and if it doesn't come up type in Keshwani and then type in vocabulary words day 37 learn that word along with all the other words there are 100 videos that we have that we uh, that we have in the series of uh, in, the, in the series of vocabulary words if you're interested as I said if you're in interested in improving your vocabulary make use of make use of the series anyway so it's negative 4 let's verify it shall we what was given to us is this 3x plus 5 3x plus 5 and we are claiming that x is negative 4 so 3x plus 5 and that's our that's our left hand side and on the right hand side we have 2x plus 1 2x and we are saying that x is negative 4 plus 1 let's see what the work out of it shall we 3x plus 5 3 times negative 4 is going to be negative 12 negative 12 and a 5 will give us negative 7 let's see what we get here 2x plus 1 2 2x, x is negative 4, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, plus 1 is indeed negative 7. It works out, it checks out. Our answer is indeed correct. Now let's do the practice problem that they gave us at the bottom of the page, page number 72. Page number 72. Oh, I keep looking for my cup of tea and it's not there. The practice problem number one. Number one says x minus 5 equals 32. Well, what number minus 5 do you suppose will equal 32? Of course, 37. As I said, it's too damn silly. Add 5 to both sides and you're done. 5 is going to cancel out and x equals 32 plus 5, which is 37. And this is this is so silly, we don't have to verify it, we can quite see that that is correct. Let's do number two. Number two says, x plus seven equals negative three x. x plus seven equals negative three x. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's see what we can do. No. We want to bring all of our x's on one side and all of our known quantity on one side. Let's add 3x to both sides so we can bring this 3x here. Add 3x here, add 3x here. This one has a plus sign on top of it. And let's subtract 7 from here and 7 from here. So here on this side we have negative 3x. Think of this as negative 3x plus 0 if it helps you. If it helps you. Do you understand what we just did? We had x plus 7 equals negative 3x. We want to bring the 3x to this side. So add 3x to both sides. And if you do that, this negative 3x and this positive 3x will cancel each other, which was the whole point. And again, on this side, we have a positive 7 and a negative 7, they will kill each other. And we are left with x plus 3x, which is 4x. 4x has to equal 0 minus a 7, which is a minus 7. We are still not done. I thought we were done, we were not done. We're not, we not interested in 4x, we want to find the value of 1x. So let's divide both sides by 4. Let's divide both sides by 4. If you divide both sides by 4, let's bring this equal sign down. If we divide both sides by 4, this 4 will drop out, and we have the x by itself. x equals negative 7 fourth. x equals negative 7 fourth. Now, of course, negative 7 fourth, as you know, is same as negative 1 and 3 quarter. So we are claiming that x equals negative 1 and 3 quarters because 4 times 1 is 4 plus 3 is 7. So it's, if you have 7 quarters, think of, the, think of this in terms of money. If you have 7 quarters, if you have 7 quarters is same as 1 dollars and 3 quarters because 1 dollar makes up of 3, 1 dollar is made up of 4 quarters. I don't even know why I'm even explaining this thing. Of course, 7 quarters is 1 and 3 quarters. We need to verify. This is going to be not that simple to verify. Let's do the verification on the top. The verification is not going to be that simple and straightforward, so stay with me in the story, okay? I might even have to erase some of this, some of this, okay? We'll see. We'll see. What we are given on this side is x plus 7. Our x we are claiming is, our x we are claiming is negative 3 quarter, negative 1 and 3 quarter rather, 
That's our x. x plus 7 plus 7. That's our left hand side. On the right hand side we have negative 3x. Oh, that's all we have. Negative 3x and x we are claiming is negative 1 and 3 quarter. Are you with me so far? Let's begin the, let's begin the verification. I need the room. We need the room so I have to raise it. Keep in mind that that's what we are claiming. This is x, x, this quantity here. This quantity here is our x, which is right here, plus a 7, which is this part right here, plus a 7. And on this side, we have negative 3x. That's all we have given, negative 3x, negative 3, negative 3, and x. These two sides have to equal to each other if our answer is indeed correct. Let's find out, shall we? Please stay with me in the story. See if it makes sense to you. See if you understand it. Negative, negative 1 and 3 quarter, negative 1 and 3 quarter can be written as negative 2 plus a quarter. Did you know that? Why is that? Why is it that that negative 1 and negative 1 and 3 quarter is same as negative 2 plus a quarter? Because negative 2, negative 2, think of negative 2 as negative 8 quarters. 8 divided by 4 is 2, isn't it? If you have 8 quarters, that's 2 dollars. So if you have 2 dollars, if you have 2 dollars and somebody takes away a quarter from you, you're left with dollar, dollar and 3 quarters. That should say 3 quarters, not 3 sevenths. What the hell is the matter with me? I do not know. It should say 3 quarters. It's a good thing we caught ourselves. Yes, I'm, I know I'm dragging you in that, in that as well. I'm not taking the rap all by myself. It's a good thing we caught ourselves. Okay, so you understand now? Negative two and a positive quarter is in there indeed one, negative one and three quarter because if you add up the two figures, negative two is same as negative eight quarters. Negative eight quarters is a positive one quarter will give you negative seven to, negative seven quarters, which is what this was. So that's what this is. So I'm going to erase this part. We don't need any more. And then we have plus seven. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Negative two and a positive positive seven. Negative two and a positive seven should give us positive 5. So we have positive 5 plus a quarter which gives us positive 1 quarter. Positive 5 and 1 quarter. Positive 5 and 1 quarter. Let's see what we get there. Okay, watch again one more time. We have a negative 3 here. We're going to bring that down. And negative, negative 1 and 3 quarter is same as negative 1 and a negative 3 quarters. Negative 1 and a negative 3 quarter is same as negative 1 and 3 quarter. Did you know that? Of course. If you add up the two figures, you're going to get that. Let's see what we can do, okay? Pay, pay attention and stay with me in the story. We're going to multiply now. We're going to multiply now. It's very simple. We have a negative 3 outside. We have to multiply that by negative 1. A negative 3 and a negative 1, because they are both negative, negative and negative is going to become positive. And 3 times 1 is 3. We're done with that part, okay? You still with me? Now we have to multiply negative 3 by negative 3 quarters. Again, negative times negative is going to become positive. And 3 times 3 is 9, we end up with 9 quarters. Are you still with me? We're almost done. We're almost done. 9 quarters is same as, 9 quarters is same as 8 quarters plus a quarter. 9 quarters is same as 8 quarters plus a quarter, which is this quantity right here. That's your 9 quarters. And of course, and of course we had a 3 to begin with. We had a 3 to begin with here. And how much do you suppose is 8 quarters? Well, 8 quarters is 2, isn't it? So we have 3 plus 2, which is 5 and a quarter. 5 and a quarter, aha! Indeed it works. Our answer is indeed correct. Now, I, I do not expect you to do something like this during the exam, obviously. But just because there is something that you do not intend to do it during the exam, does not mean that you shouldn't do it while you're preparing for the exam, while you're practicing. You understand? It's always a good idea to practice a, a little bit more than what, what is there because it makes you understand the concept. If you can verify this thing right now, that's a good sign. That means you understand the concept. That means you know how to manipulate the numbers, which is what you want. Anyway, enough of the talk. What number was this? This, I believe, was number two. Was it number two? Yes, it was number two. Let's move on to number three. Let's move on to number three. I'll give you five seconds in case before I get it up.
नंबर टू नंबर टू से हैज थ्री एक्स इक्वल्स टेन और दिस इज टू सिंपल थ्री एक्स इक्वल्स टेन डिवाइड बोथ साइड बाय थ्री एंड वी आर डन डिवाइड बोथ साइड बाय थ्री थ्री इज गोइंग ड्रॉप आउट एंड एक्स इक्वल्स टेन थर्ड और यू कैन लिव इट यू कैन लिव इट लाइक दिस और यू कैन से टेन थर्ड इज थ्री एंड वन थर्ड व्हाट ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज़ थ्री बिकॉज़ थ्री इज मेड अप ऑफ नाइन थर्ड्स थ्री थर्ड्स आर वन सिक्स थर्ड्स आर टू एंड नाइन थर्ड्स आर थ्री वन मोर टाइम If you have three thirds, three thirds are one because three is going to cancel out. Six thirds, six thirds are two, and nine thirds are three. So that's your nine thirds plus a third, which is your ten third. We're not going to wor worry about verifying it because what. If you wanted to, you can verify it. It's very simple. What we, what the equation was, 3x equals 10. Let's see what we can do here. 3x, and we are saying x is 10 thirds. So x times 10 third has to equal 10, which it will because three is going to cancel out. Let's do number three. What does number three say? Eight fifth x equals six. Eight fifth x equals six. We want to get rid of this five at the bottom. Let's multiply both sides by five. Let's multiply both sides of the equation. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by five. This five at the bottom, we can't cancel out with that five. We are left with eight x. Eight x has has to equal eight x has to equal six times five. Don't worry about multiplying six times five right now. Leave it alone. Leave it until the end. We'll take care of it at the very end. We have eight x. We're not interested in finding the value of eight x's. We just want the value of one x. Let's divide both sides of the equation by eight. Well, now we can cross out the eight. If we divide top and bottom by eight, eight goes away, and we are left with just one x. And x equals six times five over eight. We have a six at the top. We have eight at the bottom. They are both even numbers. Let's divide top and bottom by two. We divide top and bottom by two. Six will become three. Six six has three three twos and eight has four twos. We are left with three times five, which is fifteen over four. We are claiming that x equals fifteen quarters. X equals fifteen quarters. Let's verify, shall we? Let's verify it. The equation that was given to us is that 8x has to equal 6. So let's see what 8x gives us. 8x. X we are saying is 15 times 4, or rather 15 over 4. 8x. This is this is 8 times x. And if 8x turns out to be 6, 6, then then our answer is correct. Let's see what we can do. We have 4 at the bottom. We have 8 at the top. Think of this as 8 over 1. We have 8 at the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. 4 is going to go away. 8 will become 2. And 2 times 15 is 30. It is not... Oh, we had 8 fifth. We, we, were not told, we were not told that 8x is 6. Because otherwise, how would we account for this 5? We were told that 8 over 5x is 6. Let's start again. We were told that 8 fifth, 8 fifth x equals... 8 fifth x, x equals 6. This quantity has to equal 6. So we take our 8 fifth and we'll introduce the value of x which is 15 quarters. 15 quarters. And this has to equal 6. I made a mistake. Let's see what we can do. We have 4 at the bottom, we have 8 on the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. 4 is going to cancel away, cancel out, and 8 is going to become 2. We have 5 at the bottom and 15 at the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. If we divide top and bottom by 5, 5 is going to go away and 15 becomes 3. And 2 times 3 is indeed 6. It works out. It is the right answer. It is the right answer. I just realized 
Well, let's not go there. That's it. We're done. Uh, in the next video, we'll do problem number five, which is in the book. Which uh, there are some things that I want, I want to make sure that you understand there as to what they mean by what is the right proper first step. The question is a little vague. We're going to take our time. We're going to do the question number five properly to understand why all the other answer choices that they give you do not qualify as the proper first step in solving the equation. After we have done that, after we have solved problem number five in the next video, I'll give you two more extra problems, six and seven, just for extra practice. That's for tomorrow, okay? In the next video, day number 115. Bye now.